so I decided to spend $5 on logo designers. Yeah, that's right, $5 for a logo design. Join in today to see what $5 can buy you on the marketplace in 2019. We're going to take a very quick look at what Fiverr is for those people who don't know. And if you want to skip this part, there's a timestamp in the corner. So Fiverr is a website where designers and freelancers in general can put themselves into a marketplace for potential work. So today we're exploring two logo designers who sell their work for $5. But as you can clearly see, there is a huge range of prices going on here. Fiverr doesn't just have people selling their work for $5. You can find people making thousands of dollars on this website. But I must say, it is a quite a saturated market to say the least. I personally have never tried to sell my services on this website. And I would imagine it's pretty difficult in this day and age, unless you've got a really strong and awesome portfolio. So I quickly wrote up a mock brief of sorts to give to these two logo designers. Let's take a quick look at that brief that I created myself. So for those of you who watch my channel on a regular basis, you will know how much I emphasize the importance of a brief in logo design. I wrote these two designers that I hired a very short brief. Everything they needed to know was right here and it was right there for them to utilize. The name of the brand, the tagline, the demographic and the target market which actually is going to be very crucial later in the video. But they had free reign on colors and design choices, and I didn't mention anything about the file formats, which again is something that's going to play a big role in today's video. As a designer, you always want to refer back to the brief and never ever forget that. So there was a brief look at the brief, and we're now going to take a look at the fruits of the labors of these two logo designers. So let's head into logo number one. So here is the first of two logo designs that was delivered to me from a designer. We are looking at two different designers today. So we're going to properly deconstruct this logo in the video, but on the first impressions, I personally don't like the gradients and the shading. I always speak about simplicity in logo designing, and keeping things flat for the most part is a really good choice. Or you can at least send two versions of the logo, one being flat and one using gradients if you absolutely feel that you need to. Also, I, uh, I really don't like this signal graphic coming off the eye. Yeah, it's relevant to the brand, but it's messy and it's overcomplicating things, I feel. But yeah, let's take a deeper look into the logo designer's professionalism that I was met with. So firstly, as a logo designer, I always send the final artwork in these following file formats. Some of you might disagree with the native AI format, but just do your research online. Most professional designers include the native files when sending to the client. This is so the client can make edits or if they need to send it to a different designer in the future. It's just standard practice. So of these file formats that I deem to be essential this designer in question sent to me a JPEG file and a transparent PNG. Now this is far below the industry standard and I effectively, as a client, do not have a decent print file or a file to edit my logo. But now let's take a look into the color choices. The designer used blue as part of the logo and blue is a good move on their part, I feel. Businesses that are propped up on the internet do favor blue in some way. This is because it's a trustworthy and a neutral color. It's also strong and reliable in terms of the color psychology. So blue is something that I personally would have gone for for this kind of design. However, the story changes when they also decided to use orange. Orange is a complementary color to blue and it suggests action and change. In the brief, I emphasize the logo is targeting young professionals. The combination of blue and orange, to me, does not match with that target market in the slightest bit. It's too loud, it's unsophisticated, and it just doesn't work. But before I show you my edits for this logo, take a look at the scale differences of the design. Again, this is something I promote on the channel, and that is that your logo should work at smaller scales, say for example on a business card. 
Here you can clearly see the logo doesn't work well at smaller scales. In the brief it mentions young professionals, and I feel this logo does not target those people. Think of simplicity, sophistication and reliability, these all traits that I would hope to convey in the logo for young professionals. So I spent literally 10 minutes taking his symbol, which I actually had to use the image trace function in Illustrator because I had no native or PDF files, and I quickly made this design here. I feel the logo type targets the young professionals more so than the original one, and the colours do work better too. Also, having the symbol in an enclosed circle helps the function of the logo more because as I stated in the brief, it's going to be for a web app. Now imagine the original logo as an app icon. It would be terrible, it just wouldn't work. So that was the first logo design and I've got one more to show you. So let's take a look at the second logo design for $5 on Fiverr.com. So let's take a look at the second logo that I paid $5 for. You're going to notice that there's no tagline this time around, and that's not a good start. Also, there is some random very fine detail within the B, and I'm not quite sure what the relevancy of that is, but it's clearly too small and too much detail, which isn't going to work at smaller scales. But no, seriously, what is that? It looks like a black hole or something, I've got no clue. So let's check to see if this designer of this logo, which is a different designer from the first one by the way, delivered my design in more than one file format. As it turns out, no they didn't. They in fact only sent my logo as a JPEG. Always send your designers these file formats that you can see on screen, and if you must, Google research this topic. So let's take a look at the scale of this logo. And of course, it doesn't work out too well, does it? The detail in the B that I was talking about earlier has all but disappeared even in the second scale. So it's not looking too good for this second logo design. Let's take a look at the brief once more. So it clearly states the tagline here as you can see, though that is one thing that I'm not happy about as a client already. And the other thing is that an astute designer would take note of the fact this design is for an app company. So imagine this design being an app icon or an app logo. It wouldn't translate so well, would it? So the brief is so important to refer back to, just always remember that. And as for the choice of colour, I feel black is probably a bit better than the logo we saw earlier, because combinations of blue and orange aren't so well for this kind of logo but it still probably isn't the ideal choice in my opinion. It does have more sophistication, but, but it wouldn't stand out in a good way. Say for example, it was an app icon in the Play Store. You'd probably just scroll by it without much notice. So yeah, again, I made some really quick edits and I went for an enclosure on this one too, to benefit the app icon translation. I also rounded off the corners of the square which matches the logo type style. So yeah, I do feel this logo on the right is an improvement to the original one. And again, it's not finished, it's just me spending 10 minutes quickly working on things. So guys, there was today's video where I spent five, well, actually I spent $10 on two logo designs. Today's video was more to deconstruct real life logo designs so you don't make the same kind of mistakes and you improve your very own designs. So yeah, please never under any circumstance sell a logo for this amount of money. I understand that the cost of living is different in various countries, but you never should sell yourself short, especially as low as $5 for a logo. Now I'm not actually sure if these logos were original or they just ripped off or anything like that, but let me know what you thought of the logos and also what you thought of today's video and my analysis of the designs presented. If you want to keep boosting your skills as a graphic designer and learning more techniques to gain more clients, subscribe to my channel for weekly graphic design content. And of course, until next time, design your future today. Peace.